Astronomers breathed a collective sigh of relief as the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, sprung to life. Getting the $10 billion telescope up and running following its launch on Christmas Day 2021 had been a nerve-wracking affair. JWST would not fit into any modern rocket without being folded, and it had to rely on hundreds of moving parts to unfurl to full size once in space. Ultimately, those efforts were successful, and the telescope has started returning some of its first calibrated images to thrilled audiences back on Earth. Yet the experience left many astronomers wondering if there was a simpler way to build and launch telescopes of this size. We were worried about the unfolding, says John Blevins of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. But with a larger rocket, you don't have to unfold in space, you can do it on the ground. As chance would have it, two such rockets are currently sitting on launch pads. Each should ultimately exceed the power of the mighty Saturn V, which sent the Apollo astronauts to the moon. The first, NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, is ready and waiting at Kennedy Space Center in Florida for its inaugural uncrewed voyage around the moon as part of the Artemis I mission. The opening shot in NASA's plan to return humans to the lunar surface in the 2020s. The rocket, tentatively scheduled for a launch in late this month, is meant to be as reliable as possible and therefore based in large part on legacy hardware from NASA's space shuttle program. But reliance on tried and true technology could be the Achilles heel. Some estimates currently peg the SLS's cost at an eye-watering $4.1 billion per launch. Presuming it is not scuttled by congressional appropriators feeling buyer's remorse, its massive size could eventually be a boon for scientists seeking to send larger, more ambitious spacecraft and telescopes throughout the solar system, and even beyond. However, it can't. On the other side, over in Texas, there's Starship, a very similar, capable, but wildly different rocket being developed by SpaceX, also in preparation to launch on its first orbital test flight pending regulatory approval from the Federal Aviation Administration. The cost of the SLS seems so egregious because each multi-billion dollar rocket will be discarded after a single use, its components relegated to the seafloor as junk or left adrift in space. Such was the standard for most of the space age, but times have changed. Starship and its giant super heavy booster are instead built for endurance, landing back on the ground for rapid reuse similar to SpaceX's current fleet of Falcon rockets, which has already dramatically lowered the cost of reaching space. For this big advantage of Starship, the famous astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson said that any demonstration of rocket reusability is a good thing and even stressed that reusability is arguably the most fundamental feature of affordable expensive things. As big and bold as the SLS may be, experts say it pales in comparison with what Starship could achieve. Starship holds the promise of transforming the solar system in a way we can't really appreciate says Alan Stern of the Southwest Research Institute in Texas, who helms NASA's New Horizons mission, which flew by the dwarf planet Pluto in 2015. It completely changes the game. Starship, by its design, can be refueled by other Starship vehicles in Earth orbit. That means it could hypothetically carry a huge amount of mass around the solar system. You could get a 100-ton object to the service of Europa, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk said in a public meeting of the National Academies in November 2021. This is a five times greater performance than the very best SLS can offer, even in its final configuration with a kickstage. Starship is also forecast to be significantly cheaper, although whether it can hit Musk's optimistic projection of less than $10 million per launch remains to be seen. If they get anywhere near that cost, it's kind of an analog to a 747 and a shipping container all in one, says Robin Haig, former head of launch at the UK launch company Skyrora. That's going to be used throughout the whole solar system. With 1,000 cubic meters of usable volume, Starship is also big enough to fit the entire Eiffel Tower disassembled, though not powerful enough to lift it into orbit. The gargantuan capability left Heldman and her colleagues to publish a paper on what sort of equipment Starship could carry to the lunar or Martian surface. Refilling Starship in orbit effectively resets the rocket equation, allowing for large payloads to be transported to the Moon and Mars, they wrote in a reference to the fact that the more mass you want to launch, traditionally, the more thrust you need on an exponential scale. Starship is not limited to these destinations, though. 
It is not fine-tuned to either the Moon or Mars, says Margarita Marinova, former senior Mars development engineer at SpaceX. The goal for Starship is to create the more generic, larger-scale exploration capability. Ideas include launching full-size drills rather than pint-size versions. You can put a 100-foot, 30-meter drill on the vehicle and then just deploy it, Hellman says. You don't have to try and fold it up. That's exciting because you can drill down into ice on Mars, which is very important for sustaining human exploration and also the search for life. Starship could conceivably also offer a two-way delivery service, returning vast quantities of material to Earth from these and other worlds. We've always been very cautious about the samples we return because we've been limited by the amount of mass, Hellman says. With Starship, you can just load up the vehicle with rocks and ice and whatever else you find. The theory physicist Dr. Machio Kaku in an interview with Fox Business's Varney & Company complimented that, well, look at it from Musk's point of view. Kaku replied in reference to SpaceX founder Elon Musk, he says, look at the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs did not have a space program, and that is why there are no dinosaurs in the room now, he joked. We do have a space program. We can avoid killer asteroids. In fact, next month in November, NASA will send the first rocket to deflect an asteroid into outer space. Meanwhile, Martin Elvis of the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics and his colleagues have written a white paper on how Starship's unique capabilities could be used to launch a wide variety of next-generation space telescopes. One idea is an extension of the Event Horizon Telescope, a virtual observatory on Earth used in 2019 to capture the first image of a supermassive black hole. In a single launch, Starship could send a stack of six-meter telescopes into space, allowing for the creation of a much larger virtual telescope. That could provide views of thousands of supermassive black holes found at the center of galaxies like our own, Elvis says. Starship could also launch a large telescope custom-built to image Earth-like exoplanets around other stars as recommended to NASA by the National Academy's Astronomy and Astrophysics and Decadal Survey in November 2021. The diameter of mirror of the Decadal report suggested was 6 meters, which is about the same as the JWST, Elvis says. But with a super rocket's large payload fairing, such a mirror could be monolithic, without any need to unfold and deploy in space, probably resulting in major cost savings and a speedier path to the launch pad. That would simplify the design dramatically, Elvis says. Finally, as Elon Musk promised, a successful orbital flight could be 1 to 12 months from now. All scientists hope that it's happening sooner rather than later. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section. Everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.